Folks, I want to thank you for stopping by tonight to Raven Street Church, where we're lifting up that name which is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee has got to bow, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Folks, listen, I want to get your attention just for a second as you're walking by Raven Street Church tonight. The Bible tells us that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And it says everything that was created was created by Him. He's the one that gave life to all things. And the Word of God goes on to say, it says that He came unto His own, and that His own received Him not. But as many as it would believe upon Him, it says that those He gave the power to become the sons and daughters of a living God. Folks, listen, and that belief is just not some ambiguous thing where you acknowledge who God is. But a belief system is something that changes not just what you say, but it changes who you are. The Word of God tells us in the Gospel of Matthew, that seventh chapter, He said that there's going to be a wide gate that leads to destruction. He said many there are that enter therein. But He said there's a narrow way that leads to life. Do you hear me tonight? And He said many there are, very, very few there are that are going to even going to find it. Folks, listen, that wide gate is all always leading to a place called destruction. Folks, that wide gate can be dressed up in a plethora of things. It can be dressed up as, as good intentions, good works. It can be dressed up as religion or whatever it may be. But folks, that narrow way is only dressed up one way. And Jesus said, He is the way. He is the truth and He is the life. And He says, No man comes to the Father except by Him. Folks, Jesus talking to a religious man in the, the Gospel of John chapter 3 to verse 3. He said, Unless a man is born again, he he will not inherit the kingdom of God. Folks, it doesn't be enough to get dipped in the requisite amount of water. It's not enough to join the right church or to wear the right medallion around your neck. The Bible says a man has got to be born again. Folks, what that looks like is what's described in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. That if any man is born again, if any man is in Christ Jesus, it says he's a brand new person. It says that all the old things are passed away. And he said, behold, everything becomes brand new. Folks, tonight, if you're walking down this street and you may claim to a relationship with Jesus, but all you are is a cleaned up religious version of yourself. Folks, listen, that doesn't qualify you for heaven. Folks, many people will come to him in that day and they're going to talk about the things that they did, the religious experience, maybe the organizations that they joined. But the Bible says he's going to say to them, depart from me, I never knew you. I was never intimate with you. I never had that type of relationship with you. Because listen, it's not enough to say unto him, Lord, Lord, the Bible Bible says that not everyone that says Lord, Lord will inherit the kingdom, but those that do the will of the Father who is in heaven. And he said, this is my Father's will, even your sanctification. Folks, says that he made it real easy for us, amen? He made it a package deal. He said that he would be wounded for your transgressions, bruised for your iniquities. He says the chastisement for your peace would be laid upon him, and by his stripes you could be healed. He made a package deal. He did his hook, line, and sinker. He died and rose again, amen? Did you can have life and that you can have it more abundantly and not just to forgive you of your sin, but to literally set you free from the burden of sin. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 6 in verse 1, he said, are we going to continue in sin so that God's grace can abound? He said, God forbid. In other words, you've got to be kidding me. How can we say that we love God and continue to look like the world? How can we continue to say that we, we have a relationship with Him, but we continue to look like the world? The Bible says, look not the the world, neither the things that are in the world, that any man that loves the world, that the love of the Father is not inside of them. First John chapter 1 and verse 6, pay close attention to this. The Bible says that we claim to have a relationship with God, but we continue to walk in the same darkness. The Bible says that we are liars and that God's truth is not inside of us. You just can't say that I prayed the right prayer or I joined the right church or I got dipped in the right amount of water. The Bible says that something happened happens in a person's life when they get born again, when they get saved, when they come to a genuine relationship with God. Romans chapter 6 goes on to describe it. It says, whoever you serve, you become a slave to. Many of you tonight, you're drawn, drawn, dragging the slave chains of sin down the street. You're dragging your bondage. You're dragging your unforgiveness, your doubt, and your fear, and your excuses, and your unbelief. But the Bible says that Jesus came that you might be free. He came, and when you're free, you're free indeed. Hebrews chapter 2 puts it this way. It says we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things that we've heard, lest at any time we should allow those things to slip. But if tonight you're walking by and said, I've never heard it, well, I got news for you tonight. You're about to hear it. Amen. He's become that light that's shining in darkness. He said you ought to give the
the more earnest heed to the things you've heard, lest at any time you should allow those things to slip. Why? Because if that message that was first delivered to us by angels was steadfast, and every transgression received a just recompense and reward, how are we going to escape if we neglect so great of a salvation? Folks, he didn't say reject the salvation. He said neglect the salvation. Undoubtedly, there's many look like the church of Laodicea here tonight. Amen. You're neither hot or cold, but you're lukewarm. And he said, I would that you be hot or cold because if you're lukewarm, he said, I'll vomit you from my mouth. But if you're saying, listen, I'm not who I used to be, but I, I know I'm not where I need to be. That means that you're lukewarm. But tonight, if you're within earshot of my voice, I got some good gospel news for you. He tells us in that 20th verse of Revelation chapter 3. He said, I stand. Do you hear me tonight? He said, I stand at the door and knock. He's knocking by the convicting power of the Holy Ghost. He's knocking, amen, by the revelation of God's word. He's knocking, amen, by the prophetic word coming from the mouths of preachers tonight. He's knocking on that door. And he said, if you'll open that door, he said, I'll come in. And he said, I'll dine with you and you with me. Folks, that's important. Why? Because we know in his word that one day we're going to stand and we're going to give an account for those things that we've done in this life. The Bible says that I saw the dead, small and great, and they were standing before God. And it said a book was open. And whoever's name was not found written in the Lamb's book of life, it didn't say they get a mulligan or they get a free pass. It said if your name is not found written in the Lamb's book of life, you're cast into the lake of fire. Folks, listen, how can that be okay? Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Amen. There's not a pause button on a relationship with God. No more than there's a pause button on a relationship with your husband or your wife. You can't say, listen, I'm just taking a little bit of time off. He's not looking for a spiritual tender date. He's not looking for a spiritual side chick. Amen. He said he's coming back for a church without spot or blemish. And that's the only way that happens is to have full fidelity with a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, he's going to confess the Lord Jesus Christ for believing in our heart that God has raised him from the dead. It said we shall be saved. But you know what you're going to be saved from? You're going to be saved from you. Because listen, that sin, I was conceived in my mother's womb. You had a destiny of destruction. But Jesus Christ came and he paid the price. Becoming not just the son of God but the son of man. And the second Adam. He came that all righteousness might be fulfilled. That whoever puts their faith in him would need not be ashamed. So tonight he's extending an invitation through time through space, through race, through socioeconomic condition. He said, I've inscribed you even on the palm of my hand. You hear me tonight? He's reaching down, looking for you. And his eye is even on you tonight. The Bible says to the prophet, it says, multitudes, multitudes are even in the valley of decision. But the day of the Lord is near, even right now. Yes, in the day of decision. You're going to stand before God and you're going to give an account. I want you to go to heaven. I want you to go to, I can't understand what you say. What you say? I can't understand you. 